everybody and welcome to January second Sunday. I know you all look forward to this. Just kidding. I'm sure you have already heard tons and tons of energy updates for January. So I decided that for this month, instead of kind of going into astrology with you guys and the premise of you know what the moons are doing and how the planets are talking to each other, I would like to give you guys some skills and some biohacking and um, some pointers to kind of navigate your 2020 uh, with the acceleration that's building up inside of you because I know that it is. I know that the end of the the, the end of the year last year was really about pushing you and kind of um, getting you so over the past and getting you ready for something brand new. And that's really what 2020 is, is it's about, it's about time that you live your vision, not just hold it in your heart and hold it in your guts, hold it in your mind, but actually demonstrate it, live it, leave your legacy, leave your mission out for the whole world to see, feel, taste, touch, whatever it is. And really January is about building the acceleration required for the rest of the year. Every single planet will be in retrograde. This year, so what does retrograde always mean? It's a reboot, it's a rewind, it's a rewiring. So it's gonna give you guys the opportunity all year long to get this right. So, you know, 2019 was really about, okay, I know exactly what I don't want. I know what I don't want to deal with. I know what I don't want to experience. And now I know with even more clarity what I do want, even if it isn't like detailed organizations of steps you're going to take in 2020, you are really getting that firm understanding of who you are and what you deserve and that you've always been worthy. And it wasn't a, a matter of what you had or what you did that created that worthiness. It was really about just who you were in your heart. Um, and you've sacrificed a lot of your energy, your time, your healing abilities, your money, for poisonous relationships, for people who didn't value you. Um, we've all been through that. You know, it's almost like we are so burnt out on the whole broken heart syndrome that we're ready to kind of like take those broken pieces and, you know, seal them all together with gold and become the alchemist this year. And to me, the definition of an alchemist is one who brings light into the dark. It also is about becoming the light even in the dark, which means you are the light in the dark which means the dark can't hurt you anymore, all right? So whether you're on a spiritual journey, on a financial journey, on a health journey, you know, on a yoga journey, on a quantum journey, it really doesn't matter because we're all literally going to be doing it the same way this year, all right? The eclipse really brought everything together. You know, it kind of purged in some old, old uh, feelings of guilt and shame and a little grief that needed to kind of pop up the last couple of weeks so you could really sit with who and what you are and really kind of build a plan, right? So with that being said, really what I wanted to give you guys is this concept of quantum leaping. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about this in class this year, you guys, all over the world. I'm gonna be sharing the fast track to quantum leaping. You've been hearing about it for a long time, what is it? Well, to me, the quantum definition of quantum leap is basically to kind of pick you up out of one reality that you are like, mm, and put you into the reality of that you which you prefer, right? Sounds easy. And if this is all a hologram and this is all just truly virtual reality, it should be that simple. But we have to recognize that we are conscious, unconscious, subconscious. We are the me, myself, and I. We are the higher self. We are the inner child. We are the ego mechanisms. So in those three parts of us, we have to make sure that wherever we're going, we take all of us. We have to take the body, which has all the cellular memory, all the muscle memory of everything you've been. We've got to take the inner child who needs to feel safe and she needs to feel and he needs to feel adventurous to go along and the higher self who waits beckoning on that 10th floor. So let me give you this idea of what quantum leaping is in the way that I'm teaching it this year in my academy and my teacher training. This idea of everybody wants to have more in life. They want to experience more. They want to um, be able to attract more. They want to have sustainable relationships. They want to have you know, consistent abundance. They want to have a strong, healthy body, right? They want to have um, true love. You know, they want to find that soulmate or be that soulmate, whichever that is. And that's usually what everybody is searching for, seeking for, looking for, trying really hard to create in physical reality. But what if it was just, what if it was just a vibrational state? 
What if it was just the next couple of floors above where you are? See, the universe always says yes no matter what. If you're focused on lack, it says yes to lack, and it gives you more lack. If you say yes to abundance, it gives you more abundance because it only knows yes. So really what you need to take a look at is if we are dimensions, like playing in these dimensions, and we are only frequency and vibration, energy that's focused consciousness, that's basically showing up, having a virtual experience, which floor, which dimension, which reality are we living on? Right. And the concept that I'm teaching my students right now is that in 2020, it's time for us to make it to the 10th floor. All right. So let me explain to you a little bit like which which floors mean what. So the third floor is basically like your third dimensional reality and your third dimensional reality consists of separation, density. Right. A lot of drama, a lot of drama, a lot of lack belief systems, a lot of suffering. OK. Lots of challenges, 10 steps forward, 10 steps back, health issues, very heavy, dense bodies, dense minds, ignorant belief systems, right? It's a very, very heavy collective, this third dimensional state, because it's really weighted down by anchors of old uh, belief systems and limitational thoughts um, and old lineages and old pain on the planet, right? And ancestral stuff. And really, it's weighted down collective. We call it in the quantum you know, world, we call it the third dimensional matrix, right? Or the earth matrix, the matrix that's held together by this idea that we are literally slaves that don't know we are, right? So as you kind of move into the fourth floor, usually what happens is you get so sick and tired of that mentality, you're like, I can't do this anymore. And you begin to awaken. And you move to this like fourth floor concept. Now, the fourth floor concept is you start to look around and you start to see other people like you. Right. Wow. You're a black sheep. You're an empath. You're a sensitive. Wow. I'm starting to see people like myself that have always seen the world differently, but didn't know necessarily how to be or what to do because I was always looked at devalued and unworthy for my belief systems. But on the fourth floor, you begin to identify with this other world within a world, right? The different types of foods, different relationships with animals, different relationships with nature, different relationships with people. You start to kind of work with your own empathy. You start to get downloads, right? You're starting to kind of like move up the dimensional understanding. Or if we were going to keep it really simple, you're beginning to lighten up, right? If are we all here for enlightenment? Yes. So you're lightening up, even though it feels more complicated because as you rise above, you're asking questions like, why are people still sleeping? Why don't people see the world that I do? Why don't people love the way that I do? You know, why are people hurting me? Right? So you still don't have all of your bearings as a creator yet on the fourth floor. You have an understanding that you create your reality, but you are, you, you are not the master yet. So what you do is you fall into a rhythm of what we teach is kind of this victim perpetrator sequence, right? So you try to stand up for yourself, you know, someone sh pushes you down or, you know, takes you to court or whatever. And so you have to kind of fall into that victim energy and you climb back up and you follow and back and down. And really what it is, is it's pressurizing you. It's moving you into the higher spaces by basically pressurizing your awareness. You're having to self-realize the higher you go. You're having to really connect with yourself, your thoughts, your belief systems. You're having to check in with your behavior. Right? You're having to practice a new daily routine and that will get you to the fifth floor. And I will say that most people that I meet that are on the spiritual journey are really at the fifth floor. And you think, no, I think I'm higher, but let me let me explain. So the fifth floor basically looks like a very thick contrast of survival issues and the beginning of thrival issues. All right. What that means is you have mastered a lot of yourself. You've mastered a lot of your life. You are becoming yourself. You are moving to the higher realms. And the more you lighten up, the more you connect with that 10th floor or your higher self, who is literally waiting there like, I got all your stuff waiting here. I'm waiting for you. I cannot come down where you are because it's dense down there and all I am is light. So I'm going to wait on the 10th floor for you. So as you move up this, this kind of um, metaphorical elevator system to the next floor, what you're doing is you're aligning your frequency and vibration to your natural state of being, which is your higher self. That's what you're doing. This is what the whole game is about. And Earth is in two games. It's in two game sequences. It is in survive and it is in thrive. 
right? It usually takes about half your life to figure out, duh, I don't have to, I don't have to survive. I can thrive. I just got to change my frequency and vibration. I don't have to work harder. I don't have to change who I am. I just have to allow who I am, right? I don't have to change who I am. I have to allow who I am. I have to lighten up, which means I have to let go. So on the fifth floor, what you're faced with is a lot of um, mind games because you're going to get your heartstrings majorly pulled on the fifth floor because of your old obligation to the lower floors, your old judgments of yourself and others that have to get into alignment, right, in order to thrive, your silly fears that have always been liars, right, your behavior that sabotages you. You have to face that on this floor. You have to face the conflicts that you have in your life as a law of reflection reminder that whatever is coming back to you is nothing more than a mirror. And you have to take responsibility. You'll notice on the fifth floor, it's like you feel like you have to be responsible for everything. You're like, I have to be responsible for my spouse's vibration and I got to be responsible for this. And you're, you're kind of like, there's a little bit of a tantrum going on, but at the same time, there's a like freedom in that. And so what you do is you kind of navigate this floor and you are always kind of going between this old survival games and thrive old survival games thrive, which means you have a lot more than you've ever created in your life. You've got opportunities sitting on the table that you couldn't even imagine a year ago, but at the same time, you still have the lingering survival issues, you know, the 3d job or the job that's keeping you a little bit bored stuck right? And it steals your motivation and your energy for the rest of your life. You know, you're still trying to figure out how to put your toolbox of your intuitive gifts into the world. And how do I get paid to be myself? You know, or how do I get paid? Well, because most of you hopefully by now are getting paid at some point to be yourself, whether you're an IT person, an artist, you know, you're getting paid at some level to be yourself. But what I mean is the self that is at the 10th floor that perpetually plays, goes on adventures, acts as an inspiration, walks around as an example. And really the only thing that they do in life is be more of themselves. And we seem to gather and flock to those type of people. So the easier it gets, the easier it gets. And the reason why is because you're lightening up, you're letting go. So you're going to notice that you're going to be using the seven steps of manifestation big time as you climb these floors, right? Your desire is going to become pure, which means you're not going to have a desire and then have it hurt. Like your desire isn't going to come forth and be like, I'm going to create this business this year, followed by a thought of you're never going to do that idiot, right? You're actually going to go, I believe in this desire. I can see my vision. My intention is not that I want a business, that I am this business. I am this truth. I am free. I am abundant. I am magical. I am a healer instead of I want to be, which is on the lower floors. You really start stepping into intention on the fifth floor. And the reason why is because you get so sick and tired of suffering. This is why you literally how you move up the floors is you just get so sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're like, I'm done. And one of the things that I taught my class at the beginning of, of January is let's build a life based on what we no longer want, which means we just play the duality game. You may not know exactly who you're going to be in a year from now, but you definitely know what you do not want. You will not tolerate what boundaries need to get set firmly where consistency and discipline, which is not a bad word, need to be at the center point of your focus because without those consistencies and those disciplines, you'll never get to the dream. You'll never get to the 10th floor because trust me, every floor has major distractions. Every floor has a party going on and a war going on. And you're going, oh, what's going on in that over there? There's a party, oh, there's a war over there. And you really can get stuck on every single floor. If you're gonna get stuck on a floor, guys, let's meet on the 10th floor and let's just get stuck there for a while while we're here on earth, right? So with this idea of moving up the seven steps of manifestation, with this idea of self-realization and lightening up, you'll notice that the seventh step of manifestation is surrender. Surrender is at the base of every ounce of your freedom. It is your greatest choice in any situation where you are unclear or uncertain. Surrender it. Your higher self on the 10th floor will take that message, trickle down to through you, inspired action, give you the memo in your sleep cycle, let you know where you're in the way of yourself or where something's in the way of you. And it will be birthed in within you as a download or an inspiration. And you'll know what your next move is. But without surrender, 
You're literally a know-it-all and you will be stuck on that floor, okay? So there are lots of ways for us to move up quickly. I'm all about biohacking because it is really the body, the mind, and the soul that have to become a unified relationship within each other if you're going to quantum leap. And to me, quantum leap is how do I get to the next floor quickly? How do I how, how do I jump floors, take the elevator, pack all my stuff, and actually move up there? Because I visit up there a lot, right? I know what it feels like up there, but I haven't lived there yet. I might even have keys, but I'm afraid to let go of people, places, and things on the fifth floor or the fourth floor that I hold in my heart, right? Pull on your heartstrings. Because as you get to the higher realms, the obstacles and challenges are going to get more intense. Right? It's like it's easy to give up a money struggle, but is it easy to give up a toxic relationship that you absolutely love and adore? Is that easy? No. That's where your heartstrings start getting pulled on. Your, your natural rescuing mechanism, your hero complex, let me save the world, which means let me save everybody on the fourth floor, which basically means that I'm going to stay here. And I'm going to be a big fish in a little pond, and I'm going to be the smartest person in the room, and very soon this is going to get very old. Right. So I'm going to go to the next floor where I might be an amateur and that scares me. Right. I'm going to be a little fish in a big pond. But you know what? Very soon you're going to let go and you're going to move up and you're going to start owning each floor and you're going to step into your IMs. So let me give you guys my five tips to basically get to your next floor, regardless of what it is. You're on the third floor. If you can hear me, this will get you to the, the fourth floor. If you're on the fifth floor, this will get you to the sixth floor. All right. It's all about biohacking. It's about making sure that we change the cellular memory stories to who you are now. Right. Your new I am not who you were because who you were. You know what? And I can relate. We've all been a failure. We've all been, you know, hurt. We've all been rejected. We've all been abandoned. We've all been used. Do we really want to take that story? those frequencies and that memory that's sitting in our body to the next floor because it will just taint it right you don't want to you don't want to move into your penthouse apartment with your old busted furniture right you want to level up which means you want to build all new things when you get there new car new furniture new art right maybe some things you'll take with you that are dear you know like I'm taking my kids because you know I love them so they will be coming with me to the next floor but everything else right including toxic relationships and things like that, have to be surrendered, okay? So my five steps to get you guys to quantum leap and live your vision are, all right, I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget or get them all crazy. Okay, number one, number one, and this probably is, if you stick with this concept, it will get you 60% of the way. Now, this is what I'm talking about heartstrings, you guys, because... The idea of an allergy, let's go there for a second. We all have seen someone who is allergic to something. Even you, you might be allergic to something, right? And in that allergy, you are not judging the thing that you're allergic to, you're just allergic to it. It's like, you might be allergic to bees, but you don't necessarily hate bees, right? You don't hate them. You might be allergic to peanuts, but you might love them. And that's the concept that I want you guys to really sit with right now. There are a lot of things right now at your vibrational level, which means your karmic level, all right? Wherever you are within your fractal consciousness in this universe has gathered karma within you, okay? Which means there's stuff you haven't worked out yet. Hello, we're here. That's what we're doing. So if there's stuff that you haven't worked out yet within you, it's going to be in your blind spot. It's going to be in your shadow self. It's not going to be obvious. Now, when something comes into contact with your body, right, people, places, or things, they bring up a allergic reaction within this biochemistry. And you don't know why, but all of a sudden, just like eating a peanut and you're in the hospital, all of a sudden you're spending time with someone and you don't feel so good about yourself. You don't feel worthy. You don't feel like you can please them. You don't feel like you're good enough. You don't feel deserving, right? You don't, you can't say the right words. And all of a sudden you're fumbling because, you know, two hours ago you were like a spiritual healer, right? And now you have no words. You have nothing. And here's why. is because our bodies are allergic to people the same way 
that we are allergic to food and animals and certain nature. And it should be looked at the same way without any judgment of this isn't healthy for me right now. You see how there's no judgment, you're a bad person, you're evil, you're dark energy, you're a narcissist. Let's leave all of the judgments off the table and let's just look at what's really good for us right now. If I am going to get to the sixth floor, I have got to feel worthy because that's the floor of abundance, right? This is the floor of solid anchored structure of abundance, which means it's consistent, which means I am in the thrive game. As soon as you guys get off the fifth floor, you move into the thrive game. We don't have to worry about paying your bills. You can go on multiple vacations. You start to meet sixth floor people who can also go on vacations. You start to meet really great idea people with great, great ideas who are not trying to steal yours or worried about you stealing theirs. You are wor working with people, not against people. You are falling in love with yourself, which makes, makes you love everyone, right? This is the floor of ultimate self-love and the freedom and abundance to start really playing. Okay, this is where your time slows down, yet everything you want speeds up, okay, instead of going so fast like it does on the lower floors, all right? So we want to look at these relationships. What I call it is a perimeter check. Look around your life right now and ask yourself, what is keeping me on the floor that I'm on, right? Is it relationships that I feel obligated and responsible for? Okay, good. Let's look at those relationships. Are any of those relationships that I'm obligated to or connected to or attached to have any sort of allergic reaction to me? Just be honest. Just be honest. Just look at it as yourself as a little child. You would not put your child in harm's way. So look at the people in your life and say, right now, at my level of awareness, at my level of consciousness, is anyone in my life make me feel less than my higher self? less than worthy, less than deserving. Who bleeds me out? Who makes me feel empty of my own energy? Who exhausts me, right? Who, who can never be satisfied? Who is always, always playing the victim in my life? Who is constantly playing the perpetrator? Now, what I do see a lot is that you have, through your own path of least resistance, cleaned house already, and you are finding yourself alone, right? You are alone. You don't maybe have family around you. You might not have friends around you and you might not be in a relationship except maybe your furry friends or nature or, you know, whatever it is. And you're going, yeah, and I, I still feel like there might be something toxic around you. I want you to take a mirror and I want you to look into it. Okay. Because you literally can be allergic to yourself. Here's how. You know, when you move away from the mom or move away from the dad or move away from the perpetrator, if there is any sort of resistance, fear, or running that you did to get away from them, because of the way the universe is set up, anything you resist persists, you will gather a little piece of them and it will become part of your shadow. It will become part of your ego. And so you will be doing something and you'll hear your own self criticize yourself. You'll hear your own self tell you you're not worthy. You'll hear your own self, you know, be disgusted when you look in the mirror or fearful of your own ability to manifest money or create something. And that's something that has to be sat with because you obviously cannot abandon yourself, right? You cannot just get away from peanuts and you cannot just get away. But what you can do is you can sit and you can recognize the voices. You can say, who does this sound like? When I say this to myself, who does this remind me of? It is the ghost of an old perpetrator. It is a ghost of an old trauma. It is a PTSD of an old wound that you literally have been so um, disrupted by and so afraid of or resistant of that you literally have embodied it. Okay, what you resist, you get and whatever influence will be entangled within you if you have not faced it. So what I'm having my students do this year is pull up those voices, recognize them, right? Love them. I love you, but you no longer need to be a part of my consciousness. I can do this without you because all of our all of our ego tendencies and our shadow tendencies are literally just trying to keep us safe. Keep us safe from repeating some sort of harmful tragedy in the universe 
whether it's a death experience from the past life or you know somebody hurting you as a child you're always trying to protect yourself from going through those experiences again and that's where those voices come from they're not actually evil they're just trying to remind you of where you need to stay focused in lack in order to survive those voices start to disappear on the sixth floor guaranteed okay which means you're replaced with voices like you got this you're a boss you can create anything you want we are free to do what I said we're free to speak our truth right I'm not obligated to you I love you I love you right those are the starts of voices that you start to hear so really what the fifth floor is it's about clearing out all of our dissociation and clearing out all those voices in our head that are not clapping for us that are not excited about us that are creating our behavior to be sabotaging so very very important if you guys want to go fast this year do a perimeter check and this means that there has to be some letting go or some changing of relationship dynamics or some better boundaries right less rescuing more self-love okay it's gonna feel a little selfish there for a while we call it self-focus so it doesn't trigger the ego right I'm gonna focus on my higher self focus on my inner child focus on healing and repairing my ego relationship so that it focuses in it focuses on the tenth floor versus keeping me on the third floor all right and your next step first one clear out allergy relationships let go surrender you see how that's a surrender piece everything I'm gonna surrender today you're gonna surrender those relationships you're gonna put solid boundaries you know what you're not gonna start you're not gonna stop loving them my one of my themes for this year is some people belong in my heart and not in my life right now until I'm on the 10th floor and I am the alchemist which means I am the light no matter where I go into the dark I'm not there yet and I'm not going to tell myself I'm there and put myself in unsafe situations that make me fall down the floors and then I have to start at the third floor and work my way back up because that's not that's not what we want this year we don't want to lose momentum like we have the last few years getting sucked into the past okay so the next one is to build a vision boot camp for yourself okay so get a vision get your why hopefully your why is not to survive hopefully your why is to thrive right create some sort of vision for yourself or find something that's bigger than you hopefully because this year it's the year of your vision so you could create anything so think big right don't think realistic think big okay what is on my 10th floor who is on my 10th floor what do I look on the 10 how do I look on the 10th floor how do I dress how do I show up right am I in a hurry am I am I am I right on time what do I have to work with start visualizing the vision of what your 10th floor looks like and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna build a boot camp around yourself for it how do I get to the 10th floor I've got to condition myself I've got to strengthen myself I've got to focus I've got to let go of poisonous food people places events that are just sucking me that are keeping me in avoidance and addiction right I'm gonna build myself a boot camp and I'm gonna stay consistent to this boot camp and every day I'm gonna say is this a 10th floor thought is this a 10th floor action is this 10th floor money I'm spending am I in lack or am I in abundance am I unlimited or am I small you're checking in with yourself and you become your own kind of um, quantum fitness coach right you become metaphysically fit because what you need to do is you need to bring the body into the 10th floor the, because the body will stay wherever the trauma is and if the trauma is on the third floor you'll notice that you try to climb to the 10th floor and you fall back down it's like shoots and ladders all right so the body has to get the new memos of who you are it needs to know who the I am is and the only way that you're gonna do that is conditioning conditioning but we're not going to boot camp to brainwash you we're going to boot camp to unbrainwash you to unlearn all of those things to release all those anchors to release all that pain to get things moving right so this would be where you would put a solid sort of sort of like exercise fitness dance something that moves the body pressurizes you a little bit with resistance you know challenge your body and when you're challenging your body that's when you say your 10th floor I am so this is what I have my class doing right now right because again if I need to break muscle down to grow it right because that's how muscle grows then I'm gonna break down the old stories in my cells and in my body and I'm going to fill them 
with positive affirmations of my I am, my now moment vision, my hopes and dreams. And I am going to use the strength of all the people that have hurt me in the past. Challenge accepted. You know, it's like the best revenge is happiness, guys. So take everything that's ever happened to you, all that pain, and turn it into your vision. Use it to get through the workout, whether it's writing your book, building your podcast, getting in the gym, putting down the sugar, whatever it is that you need to do this year, use that as your challenge. It would be even awesome if you guys built like a 10th floor playlist with music because music is like the soundtrack of your cells. That's why you cry in movies, right? Because it's like the, mu the music that is with the story gets your body into a vibration alignment because it's all sound, all right? So build a 10th floor playlist build a boot camp that you are not going to um, you're not going to give up this time you're going to stay consistent because the reward is the sixth floor the seventh floor the eighth floor the ninth floor the tenth floor and that's where your vision needs to stay consistent and it's just like when you start to finally lose a little bit of weight your ego goes okay I can get on board with this we will put down the Twinkies we saw a physical manifestation of change. So what you need to do for the first couple of weeks is you need to do this for you using the momentum from your vision and then you'll start to see physical evidence of it. And then your ego identity that's rooted in the material world will be like, okay, I'm starting to see this change. And now you have a whole participation of the body, mind and soul in action moving forward and you're actually making tangible results so it's going to be about consistency this this year it's going to be about not taking your eye off the prize it's going to be about major quantum focus it's going to be about living from the present moment as an idea that you are not here to resolve anything you are here to take every experience from your past and set brand new intentions of your i am all right that's number two build yourself a 10th floor boot camp all right, number three, um, speak in your I am's. All right, you hear this all the time, but when you say I am, there, that's a power frequency in the universe. When you say I want or I need, that brings you down to the lower floors because that's where victim perpetrator energy is. When you state the I am's, you immediately get keys to a higher floor. Now, whether you can move in is up to you if you can consistently hold the vision through your thoughts, words, and deeds. Your thoughts, words, and deeds need to match that I am. I am a healer. I am a teacher. I am healed. I am well. I am abundant and free. I am allowed to speak my truth. I am free to do whatever I want. I am safe, you know, whatever it is. And then embody that and put that into your boot camp, right? I am someone who feels safe. Great. How do I condition my life so that I feel safe? I am abundant. Great. Let me stop spending money to help other people that are on the third floor and let me invest in myself and other people on the sixth floor so that I can get higher up. And then when I get to the 10th floor, I'll have enough money to help everybody on the third floor. See, you guys' mistake and my mistake for a really long time was from the fourth and fifth floor, I was trying to help the world from my own limited self. I was trying to help the world as a victim. And what happens is you can give a little bit, but because of the victim frequency down there, it's quickly re, you know, re required in 24 hours of the next week, which means you give what you have and it's not enough. And then they're not grateful for it or they need more. And so your heart bleeds out, but you don't have anything more to give. So now you feel worthless. So my recommendation, you guys, is get start, get to the eighth, ninth, and 10th floor where your abundance is so huge that you can help the whole entire world and you want to feel it. Okay, that's where the alchemist is. That's where everything turns to light and you have your cup runneth over versus a very, you know, two inches of water that you're constantly giving away and that just keeps you at your floor. All right, so we've got the boot camp. We've got the clearing of the allergies of toxic relationships in your life, letting them go, changing directions, right? Um, we've got speaking our IMs through thought, word, and deed, holding yourself accountable to them. And here's another thing, is if you guys have eliminated toxic relationships, which is step one, you'll notice saying your I am's out loud in public, demonstrating it won't feel weird. But if you don't eliminate these toxic relationships or you know change the direction of them, you won't feel safe to say your I am's. That's another clue that you're not in a healthy relationship. If I can't speak my I am's and have someone go, 
Yeah, I could see that. You're awesome. That's your check. That's your uh, hello, uh-uh. Because if you cannot say your I am's without people judging you or not supporting you or not believing in you, you are with the wrong people. You are with the wrong group. And I know, I know you feel safe with that group because you're the smartest, you know, most powerful one there. But that is not going to get you anywhere because you're not going to feel safe to demonstrate and be your true I am's. You're not going to be safe to speak your truth. So clearing out the toxic relationship makes room for all cool people who say hell yes to your I am's and then help you act them out, right? Okay. All right. Number four. Let me see if I can read my writing here. Um, oh, slow down to speed up. Okay. I have this conversation with so many of my students. A lot of my students all over the world have what I call the time wound, right? Hurry up, hurry up and wait, right? Or too much time or never enough time or I'm running out of time or I haven't done enough with my time or blah, blah, blah. And it stirs up all this unworthiness and, un, and, and un, this undeserving, okay? So what I've noticed when someone has the time wound, okay? They are usually way too responsible for someone else, which is step one, go back to toxic relationships. They are bleeding out, doing many things that they don't wanna do, which means when they do get free time, it's never enough. If you're finding yourself like losing your, in traffic, you know, because you guys know what you manifest when you're in a hurry in traffic, you get the slow people. The universe is like, slow down. So I'm gonna tell you how how the quantum field actually works with time and space, okay? The less present you are, okay, the more in a hurry you will be. Now, the less present you are, the more time you may have. So presence is actually what it does is it stops the clock, okay? Just like meditation stops the aging process. So when you are present, the clock begins to slow down. And what you do is you bring presence into that moment and you use your truest abundance of currency, which is choice. And you say, who do I wanna be right now? And then you laser focus on your next step. And you'll notice that when you guys start to get to the sixth floor, you have plenty of time. You're organized somewhat, you're still creative, you're not micromanaging, you're not in a hurry, you're not late, right? So that's what's stirring for you guys on the fifth floor is this major wound around time. And it usually is because of codependency or you're doing a lot of things that you don't want to be doing during your 24 hours, which means you don't have enough you time. You don't have enough you time. You're having to spread yourself really thin and you're, or you're feeling like you're running out of time, right? Like, oh gosh, I'm 44 years old, I've gotta like leave this legacy before for my kids before I die. And you know what, that is a major wound that you will feel very amplified if you don't have your inner child playtime, okay? So what I'm teaching my guys to do this year is slow down to speed up. Because it literally is kind of like, the more you slow down and focus on what it is you actually need to do and your I am's and your next step and your vision and your purpose, the universe moves into alignment with you and gives you the logical next step so that you're not chasing it. And another reason why we, we stay anchored in this go, 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 is we're trying to outrun our past, right? We think that if we go really, really fast, we're gonna outrun the past. And all that happens is we run right back into it. Because if you've ever looked at the quantum expression of time and space, it's a spiral, right? So you're always gonna rendezvous with yourself at some point wh where all your unfinished business is, and we call these retrogrades, we call these full moons, we call these new moons, and it's like a reset. Like, oh, hello, old trauma. Oh, hello, old program, there you are again, right? So you're not getting away from it, but if you're present, you'll know how to show up to it. You'll get in the fast lane where the other present fast lane drivers are, right? If you're not present, you're not gonna attract presence. So slowing down to get anchored, grounded, and present actually speeds up your journey. It speeds up manifestation. It speeds up freedom. It speeds up playtime, okay? If you're really, really, really focused on the moment, you have all the time you need. But I noticed that my son did this a couple of weeks ago. We were playing somewhere, and he kept running up to me. He was having such a good time, and he kept saying, how many more minutes do I have? 
how many more minutes do I have? And I said, buddy, you've got all the time you need. Okay, good. Okay, good. He was so fixated that he wasn't going to have enough time to play. He was actually stealing his joy of his own playtime. And notice how we do that as adults, right? It's like we never have enough time for the things that we really, 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 really want to do. And then we always have too much time for the things that we don't want to do. And that's all it is, is a shadow aspect. So work in that principle. Slow down to speed up. All you need to do is get present. All right. And the toxic relationships will help with that because you'll have more you time. Okay. The last one. Oh, wait, did I get all four? Um, the last one is that while you guys are shifting floors, you're gonna face a lot of your old obstacles, okay? You're gonna face a lot of your old selves in the mirror. You're gonna meet your past like a ghost, you know, especially when you begin to level up. You're going to kind of get the echo effect thrown at you, which means that whenever, you know, when I teach, it's like you start to level up, it's like, just like in a video game, it gets harder. It gets harder before the new game, the new level arrives, right? where the new level is being like freshly built out, you end the level at the most aggressive points. You know, that's where instead of one dragon, there's 20 dragons, right? And what I'm teaching my guys this year is to say challenge accepted when those things come, face them in the mirror, recognize what needs to be accepted and healed within you, change your vibration, change your energy, and change your demonstration, which means one of the fastest ways you guys can do this is every time something feels like fear. You can say, fear is a liar, challenge accepted. I'm gonna look at this, I'm not gonna run away, I'm not gonna avoid, I'm not gonna go hide in some addiction. I'm gonna look right at this, I'm gonna take a breath, and I'm gonna say thank you for showing me who I used to be, and I no longer need that, and I'm, ri I'm, I'm rising above it, right? And I'm gonna look at this as a moment of gratitude because I'm ending this lesson, le this lesson. lesson. Okay, so you're gonna see that. Right now, there's one last tip that I want to give you guys. And I teach my class this all the time. The universe loves empty space. The ego is terrified of empty space, right? It wants to fill it with something, a relationship, a new car, a new house. The ego is terrified of empty space. The universe loves empty space because that's where all the potential is. That's where all the vibrating little molecules of potential are. So when there's empty space, you are totally unlimited. When your space is too filled, you are trapped in the stories and the anchors of what you have, okay? So lightening up your life, right? Look at this, does this come to my 10th floor? No, throw it in the trash, give it away, donate it, sell it, right? Is this, this the way that I represent myself? Is this the way I wanna look on my 10th floor? No, good, I'm gonna work on that, okay? So lightening up, creating more space for the universe to give you more opportunities, abundance, and freedom. Stop over obligating yourself just because you know you have that old that old thing inside of you to you know be excited in the moment and make plans you don't actually want to fulfill. Like I am really working on that. You know, I always say don't make plans or don't commit when you're unhappy or too happy. Because that's not really who you are as a neutral being. And as soon as you make plans, you're like, oh, why did I do that? So don't over obligate because that will get you stuck in commitments. And what if you change? What if you quantum leap next week and you're not that girl, not that boy anymore, yet you've committed to that? So keeping those lines fresh, especially the faster that you move, it's not to hurt anybody. It's to just keep yourself free and open so that you can create as much as you can. And you'll know when relationships are at your level because they will feel like they run side by side with you. You don't have to wait on them or you have to you know, restructure your life for them. It'll be like finally you're meeting people that can run side by side with you, not while you're trying to run, they're walking. That's gonna be part of step one, right? Looking at relationships. Also, playing the duality game. This is your bonus biohack, you guys. I'm gonna end with this. Your bonus biohack is to look at everything that you feel you are lacking, right, as potential waiting, right? Okay, I don't have the money, but I don't, which the universe loves empty space, so that means the universe can fill my bank account if I look at where I actually am abundant, right? Duality game. So I'm gonna play where I am abundant. I am abundant in friendships and ideas and creative outlets and nature and you know, time on the weekends, it, it needs to be filled with what you have. Obviously don't get totally you know, 
you know, off your truth. Focus on the abundances that you do have. And then the empty space, the universe can now fill what you're looking at because everything is about focused consciousness. Whatever you're looking at is getting bigger. The universe is literally looking through your eyes. So if you're constantly looking at your empty bank account and feeling like really terrified, the universe is going to amplify that because it does not say no. It says yes. Yes. So if you're always looking at gratitude, if you're always looking at abundance, even if it's not in the areas that you want, because ego will always point out where you're not abundant, right? It'll point out where you're not free. It'll point out where you're not safe. If you just flip the switch and go over to the quantum field and go, where am I abundant? Where am I free? Where am I safe? And those are the things that I'm going to focus while I'm climbing my way out of hell to the higher floors through boot camp, through my elimination diet, through my speaking and, and behaving and acting as my IMs, you will biohack so quick within 30 days. In 30 days, your life will look completely different. But you've got to practice this in your body. See, there's a lot of quantum leap teachers out there that say you can quantum leap instantly. Now, that is not an untruth, but you would have to be so in your own reality you would have to be disconnected from all of your biological belief systems. Your memory centers would have to become inactive. Your cellular memory, your muscle memory would have to stop vibrating for you to literally turn something off and move into a new plane. Now, I haven't seen very many humans besides a few of the high, high, high level gurus that have been able to do this. I know I can't. You know, my son's got my attention. My business has got my attention. There's always something that anchors me back to the to the floor that I'm on. So I'm doing this as a biohacker, right? Kind of gorilla style here. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I'm going to take me, myself, and I with me by changing my cellular memory, by breaking down my old muscles and building new muscle in my body that has a different story, right? A one of thriving versus surviving, I'm going to love myself so much that I'm surrounded with people who are doing well in life, who want to see me do well, who are wanting to do well with themselves, right? It's not that difficult. And, and it's, it's really about choosing yourself, which feels very selfish, but it's the only way because you're creating your reality, not your husband's reality, not your brother's reality, not your kid's reality. You cannot create their reality, but you can stop creating yours and pretend to create theirs. And then everybody's goes to, excuse me, right? So I have another biohack. It just popped into my brain. So I'm going to share it with you. One of the things that all very abundant people do in life, okay, whether they're a rock star or a celebrity or a sports, you know, professional or, you know, someone who is in a state of thriving abundance, one of the things that they do, and they'll all say this in every book you read, is they associate with people on their high, on higher floors. Associate, study, spend time with, and follow, like a muse, not people on the lower floors, but people on the highest floor, especially the floor that they would like to get to in their vision. And here's why. Because the brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and real, what you're constantly bringing in as far as influence has everything to do with what you can create. Okay? So if you're constantly around lack, constantly around judgment, constantly around fear, constantly around separation. By default, no matter how pure your heart is, no matter what star seed you came from, you know, where what you know, where you came in the cosmos, you are still playing human here. And as long as you're playing human, you have a biofield and that biofield blends. It blends through influence. When you say yes to something, you receive it. When you say no to something, you receive it because one is resistance, one is acceptance. You, it's, it's both a manifesting tool, okay? So if I am influenced constantly by people, places, and things that are constantly proving to me through my thoughts, words, and deeds, and their thoughts, words, and deeds, then I'm going to struggle to get to that higher floor because what I see consistently is that it doesn't actually exist. 
and then it stays as a hope and a dream and you might work on it sometimes but really you just go what's the point you watch TV because it's not gonna happen for you because it doesn't happen for anybody right but you start to spend time with people who are like making money in their sleep going on amazing trips helping the world buying land you know growing farms taking care of multiple animals you know like thriving in their bodies and you're like wait hello this does exist and if you spend time in their energy fields or even by observation is a point of of, of acceptance and and bringing forth because the brain doesn't know the difference between imagination really you could just watch somebody read their book study their power moves all of a sudden your brain is going more influenced by abundance than it is lack and now your scales have tipped so that is something that i would recommend that you do if you're on the fifth floor start getting some sixth floor friends even if it makes you insecure even if you feel like a beginner okay start letting other people teach you you don't always have to be the teacher right so that's one of the things that i'm doing this year is i am working to make friendships and connections with people who are doing way better than i am and i thought i was doing pretty good until i saw them and i was like wow i get to level up again this is exciting i didn't even know that this was possible that this was possible so it's all exciting things and being in a state of excitement is an elevator right it moves you it moves you into the creative space it moves you into the field so that you can access all that unlimited potential all right that is what i have for you guys this month this is what we're working on in our academy this year in our training and the reason why is because if we can develop some sixth seventh eighth floor ninth floor humans that we are embodying this idea that we create our own reality and we we're not just preaching it we are acting as an example and we are doing great things with that freedom and abundance then we can change the world now one thing you're going to notice about 2020, because I know you're hearing this from a lot of other gurus and teachers out there, that this is going to be a very hard year. This is going to be a very scary, scary year. And the reason why you're hearing that is because whatever floor you are on is the floor that you will see manifest in your reality. It will be the thing you experience. So if you're on the third floor, which is constant state of destruction, you're going to see that everywhere. Okay, if you're on the fourth floor, you're going to see destruction, but you're going to start to see it also as they as a level a leveling for creation. You get to the fifth floor, you're going to understand destruction and creation. You get to the sixth floor, you start to look at everything as creation. So I know that so many of you guys are so terrified and upset and heartbroken over all the fires and the earthquakes and, you know, all of the hurt animals and people in the world right now and possible war rule three and everything that's going on right now and i will tell you that earth is going through her phoenix experience she is going to resurrect from her ashes but there has to be a destruction of the old paradigm there has to be elimination there has to be a flat line so that we can rebuild we have to let go she's letting go she's purging we are purging we are getting rid of some relationships. She's getting rid of some relationships. We're getting rid of some stories. She's getting rid of some stories. She processes her emotions through weather, right? Through fires, through tsunamis. We do it by, you know, screaming, crying, yelling, whatever. So we are the micro of her macro. And this is ever happening is right on time. And if you're on the sixth floor, you would see that everything that's happening is a huge wake up call because pressure wakes humanity, pain wakes humanity. As you get to the higher realms, love gets you to the top floor. But from the third floor to the fifth floor, you're going to notice that it's pain, it's pressure that gets you there. So if everything that's happening gets our community to come together and become abundant, I've watched over the last few years, a uh, few days, there are hundreds of very abundant people sending millions of dollars right now to Australia, spending millions of dollars to um, Puerto Rico. So you have to make sure which news you would like to look at, right? Where you want to look at destruction or destruction and creation. Where do you want to look at? 
you know, the breakdown of Mother Earth or the coming together of the humans on planet Earth to rescue and love, okay? So it's all how you look at this. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to see your Earth from your floor. And from the third floor, kind of sucks because you got seven floors on top of you, so you know it's super noisy and it seems like everybody's got shoes that have cement, right? Super loud. You know, your your plumbing's leaking, so you're, it's everything is flooding down there. And it's constant chaos. Now, the fifth floor is not that much better because it's pressurizing you, but you can hear the sixth floor party. You know, you've seen the elevator going to the penthouse, and you're like, I want a piece of that. And I think that's where most of us are right now, is we are getting off this fifth floor, we're moving into the sixth floor. And I'm going to tell you that from this perspective, this earth is not moving into a destruction that's going to die. She's moving into a rebirth. And there has to be some sort of pressure and clearing so that the truth can be exposed, so that the truth can set us free, and that our truth of divine creators and and the fact that love wins, right, is the only thing that we ever have to focus on. And you'll notice when the light, when the world is in crisis, you'll see love everywhere if you look for it. Okay. Have an amazing January, you guys. Hopefully you took some tiny little nugget that I said. I know I speak really fast. Um, I didn't want you to fall asleep during this one. And really take this to heart that you can have it all. It's time for you to set your vision and let's bring it to life through your actions, your words, your deeds, and your focus. All right? It's all on you. It always has been. And when you invest in yourself, then you'll notice that everybody else begins to invest in you as well. So I'll see you guys next month and I'll see the rest of you guys in the classroom.